So secure elements, uh, this term is used for, uh, for specific chips, like electronic component, integrated circuit, which is designed to be secure. So their main role is to be able to securely store data and some data like a cryptographic keys are generated inside a chip and stored in the, inside a chip. So if you have a private and public key, you will ask this device to generate key pair and it stores the private key and provide the public key outside. Yeah? And the idea is that the private key stays always securely stored inside the device. There is no way to get it out. Simply this stuff is very, very complex and complicated and designing the chips itself is really requires a lot of investment and a lot of specialized expertise. So it's basically not that easy like a software that you can do a piece of software and, and use it. So, so this means that really, it's, it's hardware, it's fixed and uh, the chip design economy says that you have to be basically able to produce at, at scale. Yeah? So this is why it's not normal because during the time there were few, let's say, vendors on the market who say they do the secure, uh, secure chips or secure microcontrollers, secure elements, but uh, all the chip design industry, it's kind of normal to do it as a closed source because it's uh, protecting their know-how, their knowledge, and they're just selling the chips. What is different in context of Bitcoin, Satoshi Labs and Tropic Square is that Satoshi Labs uh, had a, for long term, long time need to have a secure chip, or at least to be auditable and understand what's in there. And such silicon is not available on the market. So they, uh, Satoshi Labs is a great product, Trezor, based on open source software. So they really understand the benefits of the open source. But the open source in the hardware industry or chip design industry is at the very, very beginning. Yeah. And we are with the Tropic Square, you know, the effort is to make this chip auditable and transparent, we say open, partially open source, maybe not fully, but it's not important. The important thing is that we want to provide a solution where you can get more towards, uh, let's say, trust into the way how it's, your data are processed. Yes, it could, but um, if there is a problem already implemented, you know, how it works with the closed industry, like this, of the shelf secure chip. So vendor says, hey, this is a secure chip, you wanna buy it. And they don't provide detailed information how things are done. So you only have to trust the vendor. And the reality is that, you know, there are people out there who can just take the device and find the vulnerabilities and crack it anyway. So it means there is something not good enough in the design. Because of its closed source, there's limited pair of eyes who can review the design. You know, the chip vendors are huge corporations, but the don't necessarily mean that the, the lot of people saw the design because their obscurity and um, the sense for protecting know-how is you know applied not only outside their companies but also inside so in the end this chip might be just seen by a small group of people doing the actual design and the auditability and transparency enables this to wider audience you know it's very specialized in industry anyway eh? you need a lot of experience and so on so we are not naive that you know every people will go and uh, review the details but that's essentially not necessary because there will be independent expert you know security audits and so on so so there will be people who might help you and there will be a reputation built on top of it yeah? so yes back to your question it may open new attack vector but it rather uh, makes designers aware of this attack vector which already been there but not considered by the by the public so that's where we see the value and that's why we want to open the part and uh, yeah we have to do it only partially right now but even the partial is a, a big progress towards what is available today and as we are working state of the art secure chip we have to rely on, on certain security architecture and uh, IP cores, which are really necessary to make sure that we are robust and resilient. So we are opening only the part where data, uh, let's say, user data are processed. We show how we encrypt the data, where they are stored, but we can't tell the details about the, the storage itself, like the memory. But there is at least this knowledge, okay, 
but the data are you know encrypted the encryption is that robust and so on so there is a more than just a black box uh, we hope so yeah that's that's yeah. why we're doing that so definitely yeah. that's our target so we uh, so far got the first prototype and uh, things looking very great so uh, currently the security properties of the cryptographic accelerators are under the uh, evaluation by the way it's it's done in in, in lab in italy and uh, yeah we're looking forward to get the results and uh, you know continue our development to have a product as soon as possible well we, we would like to have a second prototype next year and uh, be ready for uh, mass production in 2025